Now, as we get closer to writing some code, you have to ask yourself, how will the developer interact with the platform? Will they use a pre-built SDK or will they use HTTP or REST? The reason I say HTTP slash REST is that there are some purists out there that have a very strict definition of REST. It might be safer and more general to say that we're going to use the HTTP protocol to interact with services. In general, Azure supports a number of different programming languages and environments, as you see there to the right. These are not only languages, but also come with their own tooling to support the language for compilation, debugging, and so on. Azure supports REST and HTTP for virtually all operations and services, so you don't have to necessarily dive into the SDK. Why would you do it? Well, if that SDK exists, it might be a better option and easier for you to implement. REST can be a little bit wordy, a little bit tricky, but in general, SDKs typically simplify the interaction. You can find a list of all the available SDKs at the link at the bottom. They're on GitHub. While SDKs can simplify programmatic access, REST does have its advantages. There on the left, you can see the various RESTful API verbs that are used, get, put, post, and delete. Normally, REST operations are associated with one of those HTTP verbs. We'll take a look perhaps in some web proxy tools to see how these work. So REST can give you an advantage in that you can choose the data format. Do you want Adam Pub? Do you want JSON? And it's available from virtually anywhere. REST is HTTP based. So essentially you can access the Azure platform from almost anywhere because of its support for HTTP. It's a fundamental building block. In fact, the SDKs you see in Azure are layers above the REST API. So this course will be comprised of a mixture of REST-based approaches as well as the SDKs themselves whenever appropriate. But you, the developer, can always fall back on REST to perform those things or those gaps not covered by a specific SDK.